Hello, here at the Port of London Authority, we want to make sure you enjoy your time rowing on this wonderful tidal river and do so in complete safety. So, let's have a quick look at the rowing chart and talk about what you should expect when you're out there and what you need to know before you get underway. The Tidal Thames is home to a large proportion of Britain's rowers and some of rowing's biggest events. The stretch between Putney and Kew can get very crowded, and to keep all river users safe, there is a code of practice for rowers to follow. This film gives a brief summary of how the rowing code works between Putney and Kew and also acts as a general guide to rowing on the Tidal Thames above Putney. When planning an outing, you should always check the weather forecast and the tide times. Going out at the same time as the turn of the tide should be avoided. Before going on the water, you should always carry out your standard safety checks, bow ball, bungs, heel restraints and hatch covers. Those rowing or paddling in this area should follow the rowing code. When travelling against the stream, you need to be inside the navigation buoys in the inshore zone. When moving with the current, you should travel as far to starboard as is safe and practicable. The inshore zone is marked with red and green buoys. When working against the current, you should be inside these buoys. You should row as close to the shore as is safely possible. There shouldn't be enough room between you and the shore for other boats to pass inside you like this. When crossing from the inshore zone on one side to the other, you should cross between the buoys, ensuring you check for traffic moving with the current before you go. Outside of these buoyed areas, there are no special rules for rowers, and all vessels should navigate down the starboard side of the channel. Bridges are one of the biggest hazards to rowers in this area, and there are a number of rules that apply to them. All the bridges in the code area have restricted zones around them where you may not turn or stop. When a bridge arch is closed it will be marked with three red discs, or at night three red lights, in a downward pointing triangle. Arches are closed when it's dangerous for boats to pass through, so steer clear. On the flood tide, Dove Pier is all too easy to hit. Rowing boats should not be any further to Middlesex than the word bridge under Hammersmith Bridge and should pass the yellow buoy to starboard. When there are really low tides upstream of Q Road Bridge, there are times when there's not enough water inside the navigation buoys for the code to function. In this case, rowers should turn around and go back downstream. The majority of incidents involving rowing boats on the tidal Thames are caused by boats not seeing one another. In coxless vessels, you should be looking around at least every five strokes, and coxes should always be looking out. A lot of collisions happen around the turn of the tide. You should avoid going out when the tide is on the turn. If already out, avoid working the slacks in the inshore zone, as this is where the majority of collisions happen. If collision is imminent, vessels must pass port to port. If two boats are on a collision course but an incident is not imminent, then the boat in the wrong place should make a clear move to the correct position as early as possible. When the tide is low, motor vessels can be very restricted in where there's enough water for them to navigate and may well be on the wrong side of the channel. In such cases, rowers and other shallow draft vessels must give way which may mean passing to starboard if this is the only safe option. When rowing at night, you must have lights on your boat. For rowers, that means a flashing bow light and a fixed stern light. Coaching launches carry a white masthead light and a port and starboard light. Even with lights, rowing at night is hazardous and should only be undertaken after careful risk assessment. There are often works on, in or beside the river that can affect navigation. Details of these can be found in the Notices to Mariners section on our website. This is just a brief summary of all the information available to rowers and paddlers in the Upper Tidal Thames. There is plenty more in the rowing section as well as another rowing film for central London. 
If you plan to head on down to central London, please take care, as conditions can be more challenging than those upstream of Putney.